So even though I've just finished watching the third season of Oz, I'm finding it quite hard to describe without repeating things I've said from my previous reviews. I suppose this is in of itself a compliment, as it's a solid season that retains the quality of the previous two, maintaining the same claustrophobic, oppressive feel, pedal to the metal intensity and interesting set of characters. If anything, the storylines in season 3 are the most interesting and engaging so far. The only real complaint is probably a whole lot of build-up and tension to a season finale that feels like it never actually happens. There's a lot of stuff that happens which makes people start to identify via the colour of their skin, even the guards and COs, you start to slowly see two clear groups manifesting from the large collection of characters. There's a lot of pent up energy, a lot of anger and dissatisfaction with things that have gone on and it very much feels like a race war of some sort is about to go down, but then nothing really happens. Still though it feels like this will be carried over into the next season, I doubt Oz would dedicate so much time and effort into this with us or without us mentality formed in Emerald City and not actually do anything with it. It's quite cleverly done really as many of the driving incidents don't feel connected and are incidental but narratives are quickly seized upon by the race baiters like Vern Schillinger and Simon Adebisi. I think season 3 feels more plot driven than season 1 and 2. It tends not to be about something or someone for one or two episodes and then ditch them, rather plot points are carried over and many things tie in together organically, paying off in the same episode or some episodes down the line. And there's a lot of planning in this season, planning and betrayal. Everyone seems to be scheming and making secret moves to get what they want and you never quite know what game is being played and who is playing it and who is getting played. Adebisi, one of the best characters and one who apparently refound his love for his African homeland in season 2, seems to have become nerfed this season, just shuffling around all pleasant and passive after spending time in the loony ward. But is he up to something? Tobias Beecher, who had his arms and legs broken in the previous season, is recovering and an interesting scenario comes about when his former tormentor Schillinger's son arrives at Emerald City. You know Beecher has something cooked up for revenge, but he actually befriends the kid, comforting him in his intimate moments and consoling him against the brutal upbringing he had under Schillinger. Spoiler alert for this story, but it's very surprising that Beecher went down this route when he could have easily tortured the kid. It culminates in a brawl between Schillinger father and son, with Schillinger disowning him and a shocking scene where he has a cop sneak in a drug into the hole where his son is, intentionally, so the kid ODs and dies. All very shocking stuff, but the most jaw-dropping thing about it is when it turns out this was pretty much Beach's plan from the get-go, and he used the kid to get to Schillinger. But things don't end there, as Beecher feels remorse for this, and like a lot of lost lambs, he turns to the Muslims and Sayyid, wanting to know more about their faith. Many of the Muslims, however, reveal themselves to be something of black separatists, one rule for me and another for thee, and they reject Beecher, all aside from Sayyid who welcomes the man and teaches him about Islam. This further alienates Saeed from his followers, a rift that has already been in the air for some time, especially with Saeed getting the hots for a white woman who visits him, initially as part of a case he has going on. Eventually, the Muslims replace Saeed with a new leader. So it's quite interesting how more than ever before the different storylines of Oz weave in and out of each other and have a connective tissue. Emerald City starts a boxing competition where each group has one person participate. It's a cool aspect of the season, very well shot and not without the usual drama, Ryan O'Reilly manipulating everyone left, right and centre and even spiking boxers water to manufacture results. It was cool when boxing matches were happening and you see practically every character in the show in the crowd cheering, booing, jeering and egging on participants. It also starts off as an initiative for inmates to get a sense of camaraderie, sportsmanship and release of catharsis, but quickly descends into infighting, division and even murder. In some ways Oz is a perfect show for young up and coming actors to show what they're made of to see if they'd get noticed and picked up for other shows. Many of the actors will go on to achieve some great things, usually in other HBO shows. The show is so centric on the actors putting them right in your face so any discernible talent is instantly noticeable. Even the director credits, if you pay attention, come up with notable actor names, with some episodes of this show being directed by, for example, Matt Dillon, Chaz Palminteri and Steve Buscemi. 
Edie Falco would actually pretty much leave Oz at the end of this season as she would take on the role of Carmela in The Sopranos. So all in all, it is the third solid season in a solid, gritty and hard-edged prison drama.